Hello, in this lecture we're going to work some smaller test type problems that will be the size that could be in multiple choice type questions. First one says, if a check correctly written and paid by the bank for $4.52 is incorrectly recorded in the company's books for $3.89, how should this error be treated on the bank reconciliation? So obviously what we will see in the bank reconciliation, we'll see the bank statement has something different than what our books say. And obviously, if we take these two numbers, we have the bank says that we have 450, uh, 452 on the bank statement, and our books say that we have 389. Then we have a difference of the 452 minus the 389, and that's going to be uh, 63. Now, our books are the thing that is wrong. So on our books side of things, uh, we wrote it on there at 389 and that's too low therefore we're gonna have to take this money the 63 out of our account we're gonna have to reduce our checking account side of it on the on our books side of things when we do the bank reconciliation and then of course what will really happen and real you know after we do that is we'll make the adjustment to it meaning we'll actually credit cash and then we'll have to debit whatever account needed to be debit debited when we wrote the check in the first place Next one says, if a check is correctly written and paid by the bank for 541 is incorrectly recorded in the company's books for 514, so we switched to those two numbers, obviously the 4 and the 1, how should this error be treated on the bank reconciliation? So this is another one that will be caught by the bank reconciliation. That's why we're doing the bank reconciliation. And of course the bank got it right because they actually had the check. And we, uh, on our books, when we entered the data, into the books and it's probably because of course our books were writing the checks outside of the system and then just entering it in and that would mean that we'd have a data entry error here by uh, transposing those two numbers and it should have been the 541 but we're going to subtract 541 minus the 514 what we accidentally put in there there's a 27 dollars difference and if we're doing the bank reconciliation we'd have to fix our books so we'd have to go to our side of the books and say okay it should have been 541 we put in 514 therefore we're gonna have to decrease because it was a check going out our book balance by 27. again what will happen after that in real life well uh, we would have to make a journal entry for that we'd have to credit cash reduce cash in some way and record the debit to something else whatever we wrote that check for if it was the utility bill or whatever we'd have to put it into the utility expense or something like that we have the following information is taken from the company's balance sheet going to skip down to the bottom before we read off the balance sheet amounts here and it says if net credit sales for the current year was 606,000 the company's day sales uncollected for the year is what and then we're going to use a 365 days in a year we're going to assume it's a 365 day a year not a leap year or anything and so we have the following information so what we're going to need to do this is going to be a ratio that we are going to be calculation and it's going to be the days sales uh uncollectible uncollected collected all right and what we're trying to do is figure out how long it takes between a, a sale on account to uh make the sale and then to receive the money from the sale and the way we are going to calculate that is we're going to take the ar accounts receivable i'm going to select alt enter so to go underneath and ar divided by credit sales so these are sales that we made just on account that went into accounts receivable I'm going to go ahead and merge these cells so it'll be a little bit larger and I'm going to underline this home tab font underline there's our ratio that we're going to have and now we just need to plug the numbers in there oh and then we need to multiply that sorry we need to multiply that times 365 so we multiply that times 365 so if we plug this in there then we're going to say this equals and the accounts receivable is this 75922 75922 divided by the credit sales so we have to take the credit sales we can't take the cash sales we got to kind of take those out that's why they gave us the credit sales down here and that's going to be the 606,000. and if i if i make the decimals here i go to the home tab numbers and i'm going to add decimals like this notice it's it's a long number here now uh we could round it to 0.13 and then multiply it out and we could be off by a little bit by rounding so note, if we do it in Excel, it, it will not um, reduce it due to rounding. It'll, it'll use the actual ratio that has been input, even though we can only see the ratio up to these amounts. 
the actual ratio being this ratio. So keep that in mind if you're if you're working a problem and you're off by rounding, that's the reason. So we're gonna say this equals this number times 365 days in the year. So we've got 46, and again we could see if there's any rounding here, and we're gonna go to add decimals 45.73 is what we got next one says that in the process of reconciling its bank statement for april company compiles the following information I'm gonna skip to the bottom look at what we want to do and then go through that information so it says that the adjusted cash balance per the books at april 30th is and i'm assuming what is what that's what we want so what we're doing is a bank reconciliation we're looking at our side, the stuff that we got wrong or the stuff that we need to correct our cash accounts by. And that's the purpose generally of doing the bank reconciliation so that we can uh, find things that the that cleared the bank that we probably didn't record correctly. And that's usually what we're going to pick up. So what we have here is we got a cash balance for April. That's what we're going to start with. We're going to have to adjust that for anything that we found out about from the bank statement that we had not accounted for. So we're going to start off. This is what we have before the bank. Uh, reconciliation process and then we have a deposit in transit at the end of the month so what we need to think about is is that the bank's fault or is that our fault uh, that this difference is there and in this case it's that's the core thing that's always going to be in the bank reconciliation it's the bank's fault that's there and it's really nobody's fault obviously that thing didn't clear that the, the uh, deposits were made they haven't yet cleared the bank but our books are correct we have that information now therefore we're not going to fix our cash balance our cash balance is right the cash balance on the bank statement is wrong due to the fact that the information is not there yet then the next one says outstanding checks at the month end well that's the same thing on the other side meaning we're right we know we wrote the checks and they went and got sent out it's just the fact that the bank doesn't know about it yet and therefore the bank balance is what needs to be adjusted not our balance we're not going to fix our balance for that and then we have the bank checking for print new checks. So now we have the $75 that the bank automatically took out of our account because we purchased uh, new checks or got checks printed or some kind of service they provided. And we're going to have to say, I didn't know about that, but that's true. We did uh, have that service and therefore we're going to have to reduce our balance. It's not included in our balance. We didn't know about it. Now we do. Now we'll include it. Then we have a note receivable and interest collected by bank on company's behalf. Now, depending on what type of company you are looking at, this may not happen all the time, but what we're saying here is that there's an investment that's that's generating interest that's automatically putting that interest into the checking account as it accrues, as it, as they earn it. And we're, we're not tracking that until we get the bank statement. When we get the bank statement, we go, okay, yeah, we got this interest from this investment that happened. Now we know about it, that's good. We're gonna say interest that we got, income, and so that's good, it's going up. Our balance is too slow by this interest because we didn't know about it. So we need to increase our interest at the time we get the bank statement, which indicates that that has then happened. So a check paid to company during the month uh, by a customer's returned by the bank as NSF, not sufficient funds. So we don't like to see that. So what happened is uh, we, got, we got money, we deposited it, and then it bounced, it got, they came back. So that means that we're gonna have to reduce our check. We put that in our bank balance, but it's not a good check. It wasn't clear, it didn't clear. So not sufficient fund check that bounced. That we're gonna have to say, we're gonna have to reduce our balance by that. And then if we add these up, I'm gonna equals the sum of these. And that should be our bank balance at this time. And of course, if we did that with a calculator we're doing, 6245 minus 75 plus 710 minus 540 and there we have this uh, 6340 also note that these would be adjustments that we would need to make meaning we would have to credit cash and debit something like uh, bank expense or, or um, you know miscellaneous expense for checks or something like that or, or office supplies possibly we would have to debit cash here and credit interest income and the not sufficient funds we'd have to credit cash and then debit possibly accounts receivable or something like that and then see if we can get that money from the customer.